Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I am going to go over the Kia SX X-Line 2024 Telluride in Midnight Lake Blue with the terracotta interior. I'm going to post some links in the description for accessories, cargo mats, cargo trays, whatever I can find for you. And um, I am going to go over a lot of information in this uh, video. It is almost an hour long. And if I miss a feature, it's going to be rare because I think I pretty much hit everything that this car can do and all the features and all the settings. So it's definitely out there. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, hopefully you like uh, this video. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I have our very first 2024 Telluride to hit the lot. It is a 2024 SX X-Line Kia Telluride in Midnight Lake Blue with terracotta interior, uh, and this is a very beautiful car. I'm going to go over the differences here between the 2023 model and 2024. There's only a handful of small, very minute uh, differences, but I think there's a couple of big differences here. Uh, well, just one really that most people will probably want, and that's going to be right up front on these daytime running lights are amber colored. No matter which trim level you get, you now get the amber color headlights. I've actually had customers want to make their standard headlights the amber ones and almost paid four grand to do it um but luckily they got talked out of and they now can get a 2024 any trim level no matter which one with the really cool led amber lights that were previously only only available in uh, the top of the line model one thing i do like about this lake blue uh vehicle is it actually really does stand out uh, when you if I could only imagine if I were to purchase this myself to have all the windows tinted and then have the uh, Those amber lights because you can kind of see from the factory. It does come uh, With the back windows already tinted just the front windows side windows are not But I can definitely picture this vehicle with all the windows tinted a really nice color with those amber lights I would think it's really really striking this vehicle does sit on 20 inch michelin tires which are very very cool and i like how in the x-line you have these really cool black wheels right there you have your typical kia tiger nose grill in the glossy black uh, which looks really cool in this color right there you have the kia signature script badging on the front you have the fog lights right down there uh, on the X-Line SX and then you can see the uh, glossy black um, surrounding it as well. You have your very small intake airs right there uh, and then you have these really cool bold lines that people have come to know and love on the Telluride right down the side. This hood is massive so uh, it's definitely the same as in the past, but it just looks bigger uh, in this lake blue color You have LED lights on the caps uh, for your mirrors right here You have your two press lock and unlock right here instead of a button They've gone to this little uh, indentation right there, which in some models you can scan your cell phone right there to lock and unlock the car Coming along here towards the side, you have your push and pop gas cap. So if the car is unlocked and you push this, it will open. If the car is locked and you push that, it will not open. This car does have automatic rear tail. I've already opened it once, so it's not gonna do it again once I walk up to it. But I have it set for automatic open and automatic close as well. Uh, and then right there on the back, you see Telluride big and bold with a bigger version of that Kia script badging. And then on the bottom, you just have the little badging that says X-Line. Glossy black um, right here along the back bumper. And then you can also see the, uh, the sensors there. And then your reflectors down there as well. Single tailpipe with the double exhaust. And your standard windshield wiper. 
But like I said, uh, if you were to walk up to this once, you know, without actually already doing it, it would automatically open. I have it set to that, uh, but I've already walked up to it and it's already automatically uh, automatically closed again. So it's not going to do it twice, I've noticed, uh, which is interesting. I've never really put two and two together on that. But here in the back, you have your standard. If you're familiar with Kia Telluride, all of this should look the exact same. You have your standard space behind the third row it is the most space behind the third row of any uh any suv at the moment uh well in its class so that's telluride highlander palisade that kind of thing um all of this kind of looks the same you have your child locks right there on the back you have your pull straps for your third row to collapse those and then i'm just going to show you kind of an overhead shot here uh, they did make a lot of legroom in the 2024 Telluride. Uh, it's also carry over from the 2023, but as you can see, a full-size adult would have plenty of room back there. I've sat in the back of one of these things and traveled, and I've had no issues whatsoever. So I just want to kind of give you a, uh, a look at the cabin right there. Now, one thing I've noticed, and I've just noticed this just now, is that there is a slight beeping on, that I've never heard before happening right now. So with that slight beeping, I'm pretty sure if I were to walk away from this tailgate, it's going to close, because I did hear it before, and that's what it did. So let me just fix these mats here. Well, let me just show you a couple things before I do. So you do have the collapsible second row buttons right there on your left. So if I were to push that right button, uh, well, I'm gonna push the left button, it does collapse flat. Um, and then if I were to put down this third row seat right here, it's also going to collapse flat. And you collapse those with the pull strings right here, just like any previous other Telluride. You just pull and then it falls. Not too shabby. Just make that all nice and neat. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna put that right there and then give you just another quick side view of how that looks. So plenty of spaces. You do have a 12 volt plug back here as well. Uh, you have your little space for your jack and tool kit right underneath this compartment here. And when you open this compartment, you have a nice, big, beautiful uh, cubby space underneath, which is pretty cool. If you have the retractable sunshade as an accessory, so the little guy that clips into that little guy, and then it's, you know, that, that little sunshade. If you have that as an accessory, you can actually stow it right down here because it uses tension to collapse and you can actually stow it right down there. So you don't have to keep it in your garage. You could take it with you when you travel. Um, a lot of people don't uh, realize that's a possibility. So let's see what happens. Like that beeping stopped. So it did not close by itself. Hmm, that's weird. But yeah, I was hearing a slight beeping and I thought maybe that meant that the, uh, the back hatch was activated because that's what it did before. Let's move on to the second row. So lie, you're gonna spend a lot of time in the second row if you are a teenager or if you are got a lot of adult friends and you got one group that owns a Telluride that likes to travel. Uh, it is very, very spacious. Uh, I have plenty of leg room between me and the, and the front seat there. There's a little hook here to hang a bag or a purse. You have your um, cup holders. You have your USB uh, USB C chargers, USB ports there. Your you know your charging ports. Uh, you have your map pockets here uh, in leather, which are kind of cool. Uh, you have your climate controls up on top, so um, you can just activate this by pressing any of these buttons, and then you can change blower speed. You can change directionals where you want it. So let's say up top. Uh, and then you have these vents up here that open and close, which are kind of cool. And then you can control your temperature right up there. These lights are just push and pop, just like any other kind of standard vehicle that you would have in this kind of uh, class. You have your, I'm gonna close this door here. You have your sunshade here in the SX X line. Uh, which is pretty cool. Definitely uh, is very easy to manipulate. You have your handles here and you have your garment hook right there as well. Uh, not too horrible. So this vehicle does have a dual sunroof. So that front sunroof does open and then the glass would come all the way back. Your second sunroof here, which is like an ultra wide sunroof for your second and third row people, the partition just opens and I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little later. 
Uh, honestly, not a lot. If anything, has changed in the second row between the 2022s and the 2023s. You still have your handle here, uh, which is uh, to get in and out of. But really, you don't have a lot of difference uh, up here yet. Only the really major difference so far in this vehicle is going to be those amber uh, amber headlights, which are real, honestly they make they make them all look striking. I, I think they all should have had amber headlights a long time ago. Okay, let's hop out real quick and show you how to get into the third row. So let's say you need to get in the third row and you're an adult like me. Uh, you have a couple of options here. You have a button up top. You also have a button down below right there. This little guy will uh, just move this seat down. Uh, that way it collapses. Uh, but if you are trying to get in that third row, you just press this guy. She slides forward. And then you can just crawl back here. So I'm gonna close this and do it one-handedly, which was nice. Uh, and so now I am in the third row. Like I said, plenty of knee room. I mean, I'm kind of touching, but not really. I mean, I could make my knees touch if I wanted to. Um, child anchor locks in the back of each second row seat. I don't remember pointing that out or not, but uh, but you can. You have your reticulated armrest here for your second row seat also. It has a couple of different points of articulation, so you can uh, do what's comfortable for you. This headrest, and all the headrests for that matter, there is a button here on the side, and if you press that down and move this guy up and down, the actual headrest, uh, then you can set different levels for that. What's really cool, you also have vents back here. So you can open and close these vents. So if you have animals that are going to be traveling in the back or children that are going to be traveling in the back or adults, uh, you can make sure they have air and that air is blowing uh, pretty nicely. You also have a little light back here as well in this trim level, which is pretty cool. And then you have your ultrasonic speakers right here. I'm sorry, not speakers, your ultrasonic sensors. And I'm going to show you the uh, walkie-talkie, the, the comm system in this thing, so you can talk back and forth with your back passengers. Well, definitely talk back to your back passengers. You have your seat belt here that can come down and cross, and then it, you can also make sure it goes into that little cubby there nice and neat. USB-C, uh, USB-C, right? Yeah, USB-C chargers here in the third row as well, along with the speakers, and then you also have cup holders down here. So not horrible if you are traveling in the third row. Apologize about the noise. I'm trying to get this video out as soon as possible. So uh, kind of midday where there's a lot of traffic. So, but hopefully um, all that dissipates. So let's say you're in the third row like I am. Uh, if you're a little kid, you can go down the aisle. If you're small, that, that kind of works. But if you're an adult and they forget you back here, you can just let yourself out with just this top button again. And then that guy slides forward and we can just get out right there uh, one-handedly. Let's talk about the side real quick. So you do have a hand holder right here, a hand grip to help you get in and out effectively. And then you also have your seatbelt clip, which is kind of cool. So that way the seatbelt doesn't get in the, way, in the way, especially if you have these seats down, like if you're transporting cargo, you can make sure you clip those seatbelt in so they don't look like that, just kind of hanging. You can make them look kind of nice and, and nestled in. Really big window for the third row back here. I mean, this thing is massive. Like this is a big window here in the third row. Um, for some reason, it looks bigger to me. I. I think that's a bigger third, a bigger window in 2024, or at least different between 2021 and 2024. But that, that looks like a really big window. Okay, let's get out and let's move to my favorite spot is going to be the driver's side, um, the driver's side cabin. And I'll show you all the cool little features there. Okay, I'm just getting old. So it took me a second to get out of there one-handedly this is super easy to put back you could do it with one hand and just give it a little bit of force and it pops back you do have a sliding bar down there so if you press this bar right here that seat can slide back so that's also another thing if you have bigger people in the third row smaller people in the second row the smaller people can scoot up and that way 
uh, they have uh, a lot you can maximize your space maximize your room all right I'm gonna go ahead and close this door here that door is closed I'm gonna go ahead and close the rear hatch since it did not auto close for me and again it's because I think I did it more than once in a single rotation look at these aggressive roof rack rails this is part of the x-line package uh, so you have these uh, roof rails here that are just a little bit more aggressive coming to the window sticker this vehicle is 51,665 uh, I do sell at MSRP so if you are looking for a vehicle um, I'm in Colorado um, we ship we use a shipping service that customers set up so we can ship it anywhere in the United States we have virtually everything electric cars tellurides I mean we get a lot of inventory and we we sell MSRP at this time so uh, let, let me know if I can help you find a vehicle because um, I do have plenty of inventory coming in the differences between an XX SX model and an SX X line are going to be right here on the window sticker so it's everything in an SX plus the 20 inch black alloy wheels the X line exterior styling so that's kind of that glossy black self leveling rear suspension and tow mode let's talk about that for a second because if you may or may not know Kia has had a recall on their tow hitches which this vehicle does not have yet it comes with a self-leveling uh, suspension right there on the window sticker uh, and tow mode so they want you or you can go and get your own tow hitches uh, we use a company here in our town that can do that but you do get the self-leveling rear suspension which will do kind of what it sounds like it'll help you level out the suspension uh, when you're pulling bigger things um, and then the tow mode so tow mode we open up the interior cabin here it's gonna be right down here so you have this little button right here on the left that says tow I'm gonna go ahead and hop in real quick let's turn that down just a touch I'm gonna hit tow and then that's going to right there it's gonna say tow mode on tow mode off tow mode on so this vehicle does have it but if you actually get one with a tow hitch you're going to be very very lucky i've noticed people that have ordered vehicles with tow hitches have never gotten them their order has never been fulfilled and that is because there is a national back order recall on some of kia's tow accessories so um yeah just thought I'd point that out let you guys chew on that for a bit so let's start from left to right so left to right we have child uh, locks for your windows which is pretty cool if it is amber colored that means it is on so anything in, in the key is if it's amber that means it's on you have your uh, window controls here so if I press this button that window is going to come down with one touch if I press it back up it's going to go up with one touch you have your lock and unlock you have your directional pad for your mirrors you can press this button and your mirrors fold in which is really cool I'm going to use that because I park in a two-car garage and me and my wife both have cars in there because uh, we use our garage for what it's meant for and then if you can see that little etching right about there there's a little triangle there which is your blind spot detector so if someone's in your blind spot uh, and you are not using your turn signal that'll highlight uh, I think it's red on, on this model it might be orange but it'll highlight a color to warn you if uh, you are using your blind spot that will light up I'm sorry if you're using your turn signal and someone's in your blind spot that will light up and it'll also beep at you as well and you also have blind spot monitoring view so if i turn my blinker on i get the camera in this car which is really really cool very very helpful my current kia has that and i do love that so definitely cool now because it has folding mirrors i'm going to make sure my directional here is left and right and make sure it's set to one of them so let's say left and if i go ahead and put my car in reverse you're going to notice you're going to get a curb uh, it's going to tilt down for your curb view, which is kind of cool. I've actually had customers be like, Vince, why doesn't my car have that? It does. You just need to make sure that you have this toggle switch, not in the middle, but it has to be left or right, like on the left or on the right. It can't be straight. It has to be one or the other. I don't know if you could, when I'm turning this toggle switch, this mirror's going up and down. So I've had many customers uh, say, Vince, I've had this in the past. I don't know what's going on. 
that's probably why yeah, this toggle switch is probably isn't uh, set like it used to be really cool little vents here that have a lot of power i'm a big fan of the actually air conditioning in this car uh it, it's actually pretty re pretty uh refreshing there uh you have your illumination button so that's going to light up this center display and it's going to light up your infotainment display here i like things nice and bright we already covered tow mode uh downward hill assist so again i'm sorry downward brake control is what they call it now so that is on so again that's part of if you are going down a steep grade, if you're towing things, you want to make sure your downward brake control is on and use that effectively. You can also open and close the rear hatch from here, turn off your traction control. So when you see those Tellurites flying around on the commercial, like in the desert and in the swamps and in the cow field, more than likely they have the traction control off. So you can definitely do that. This car does have a full tank of gas, and so that is right there. You have 356 miles till empty on a full tank. It has never been driven before, so it has 13 miles between what the manufacturer put on it and what it took to take it off the truck into our service bay and then to me. Uh, you have your cluster here, your digital cluster, which is pretty cool, and I'll show you some different features of that cluster here in just a bit. Um, but let's talk about the information displayed right here in the center so this particular model does have your speed limit indicator so as you are passing speed limit signs it's going to tell you what the speed limit is right there in the indicator if you are going over the speed limit then it is going to be in red if you are under the speed limit the numbers are going to be in black it is currently uh, not as sunny as it has been but it's 73 degrees outside right now uh, pretty hot because uh, it's, it's, it's very hot for 73 it feels like it's warmer um, and then you have 7.7 .7 miles per gallon. This car has not been driven, so it's definitely gonna give you uh, more miles per gallon once you start driving this car. Unless you drive super aggressively, then it is not gonna do that. If there's a weird little reflection, it's because the plastic's still on here. Um, I had a request from the customer to leave the plastic on. She wanted to take that off, so we're gonna leave that on right there. Um, but, Let's talk about these buttons here. So let's just start from left to right. Left to right, you have your uh, voice assistant here. If you press that, it's going to come up there with commands and you can say basic commands like Sorry, call. I didn't understand you. Exactly. Please try. Please. I still didn't understand you. And click exit. The more you speak to that digital assistant, the more it's gonna understand you. But you need to use keywords like get directions to or radio station, 89.7 or call so-and-so in your phone it will uh oh see starting lumbar stabilization okay so what that means is this car has been on for 30 minutes and i have set it to that so um the lumbar stabilization is the massage mode in the driver's seat so as of right now obviously you can't see it um there is a massager going up and down my back from the base of my back all the way up to the middle of my back and it's going to do that a couple of different times um, and then it's going to stop but it is called lumbar stabilization you can set it to 30 minutes or 60 minute intervals so it's going to do that you know every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes and um and it's kind of cool it's it's a prelude to what's going to be available in the EV9 with the massaging seats in your first rows and your second rows and the key EV9 at the end of the year. So I really do think it's a prelude to that. Wow, it's actually getting pretty deep. <laughs> it's very, very cool. It's uh, definitely effective and I, uh, I like it. So um, be on the lookout for that. If you want to go full electric, the EV9 will come out at the end of the year. Basically, it's a little bit bigger than the Telluride, fully electric, over 300 miles up per electric charge. Really, really cool. But gas version is still telluride and i really think this massaging um lumbar thing that's going on still right now for me um is a prelude to the massaging seats that will be available in the ev9 which is already confirmed so uh oh it's still going it's actually doing a little bit different thing that's kind of cool um okay so again you just got to be very specific how the contact is in your phone is how that button is going to, going to react you have your accept a call and then your star button. Star button means favorite. So if you press that button, then you are going to get a screen over here to set favorites. So you can make that button anything you want, basically. Well, anything in reasons that it tells you here. So that's reject a call, end a call. Honestly, that's what I have mine in uh, because it makes the most sense. Um, Hands-free call, change, hand, change 
hands-free calling device. So if you have multiple Bluetooth devices, you can change between them. Privacy mode, passenger talk, which we'll get to in a second, uh, which is really cool. Voice memos, home, map, reroute, cancel route, quiet mode, radio, and then nothing at all. It's just muscle memory to have this accept a call, decline a call. That's why I have it there, but you have different options. You have volume and tuner, so you can change your volume uh, right there, and then this would be your uh, song selection. Mode, if you press mode, mode is going to cycle through your available media. So that's Bluetooth, phone projection, sounds of nature, which is key is um, like meditation. You can do different things there. A uh, little bit of a meditation channel. You have USB music and FM and then AM and then Sirius. So mode, if you, and so you just select the ones you use. So if you only use FM, sounds of nature and Sirius, when you click mode again, it's just gonna cycle through those ones that you have selected. That massager is still going. I actually thought it didn't do that for that long, but it is still uh, working its magic. Um, this is the, the, the part I think is the most important. So you have this side of the screen, of, I'm sorry, of the steering wheel. You have your cruise control options right here. So your standard cruise control, and then you have adaptive cruise control. I can't demonstrate it, but adaptive cruise control sets you car length. So if you set your cruise control number at like 80 miles an hour, and then adaptive cruise control right there at four car lengths, you will stay four car lengths behind the car in, fr uh, in front of you as long as they are going below 80 miles an hour. So it is dependent upon the speed limit that you set for the speed limit of the cruise control. And you can set that at four, three, two, or one car length, uh, all right here. And then this toggle switch will uh, move your your speed that you want that you want to do. Two pages button. This two pages button manipulates the center screen. So the two pages button, when you press it, takes you from left to right. And then the toggle switch right underneath it, you can go up and down that toggle switch moves you up and down on these screens. So this is just like uh, the electronic speedometer is in here. You have your trips and your driving info, since refueling, accumulated info, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you go over one, there's your compass, and then you have your tire pressure, and then you, I'm sorry, your tire pressure there, and then your I actually have my vehicle on this screen. This is kind of like where your power of your wheels is being distributed. I have uh, an electric vehicle, I have an EV6, and so this is pretty important for me because I like to see if I'm using the front motor, the rear motor. I like to see if I'm using rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. Like it, I, I, I've just been kind of a nerd for this screen lately, and, and uh, this is what I have it on, which is kind of cool. Um, but again, this toggle switch button here moves you up and down. And then this is forward lane keep assist. So it uses the information from your sensors and the information up in that black box um, to keep you behind a vehicle. So you do have lane keep assist, which will keep you in the lines, but that lane forward assist is going to help you with, um, and you can see it activate right there. Um, and then your lane keep assist is right, right there. And when I activate it, the lane forward assist appears next to it. So, so lane keep assist will keep you in the lines, like, you know, when you have, you know, multiple lines of traffic, um, all that kind of stuff. But when you're on a single road or bad weather or where it's not really able to make out what's going on, it's going to keep you behind that vehicle uh, or in the lanes to keep you safe. So it uses the most information that it can to keep you usually like on a single lane highway kind of thing. That's what they advertise it as. But it, it uses specific information, you, you know, in difficult conditions to keep you behind that follow car or the car in front of you, or just one lane instead of multiple lanes. It uses all kinds of different things. Pretty cool. All right, any questions there? Uh, that, that digital cluster up here is uh, that a lot of people uh, have questions on that. So I like to make sure I go over that pretty thoroughly. So coming over here, we have, this is a complete touch screen. Uh, you have your music right here, time and date. If you touch this music part, it's going to take you into the radio. And obviously uh, while well, I'm on YouTube, so I can't play any music or nothing else that's going to uh, like ding me. Uh, but it's super easy. If you just want to add a channel, like if I want to add the heat, then I just click add channel right there and then it'll add it to my, my uh, channel list there. You can literally click channel list and that'll give you all of your Sirius XM 
uh, channels that you can just scroll through and then when you find one you want to add just the plus sign right there little arrow takes you back little house takes you home so uh, I want to go back into radio real quick so there's a couple ways I can get there I can just push the physical button uh, to get me right back to radio and then what did I want to show you when I was in here I wanted to show you oh uh, right here so this little button here is how you switch from AM and FM and Sirius so you can switch it right there in the toggle switch anything that you need to change you can typically just press like if I want to change the time I can just click the time right there it'll take me into the time screen and I want to go back one step a little arrow takes me back and then there I am back to my radio so this is what I like to call a tri screen so you have one two three screens of information a lot of the times these two screens are combined into one big screen then you have a little uh, a third screen there this guy you can toggle up and down uh, when you have your uh, phone connected, you can have your calendar there, and then you can add and delete what you see in that third box in the settings, so you're not a slave to what goes there. But let's take a look at passenger talk since we're here. So I'm just going to click talk now. Talking with rear seat passengers. So I can just talk as normal, and then that little sensors back there that I was showing earlier, um, that helps with... Um, the microphone so i think the microphone's in that center one if i'm not mistaken but now i can talk those rear passengers can hear me and i'm not hurting my voice because i'm yelling at the kids or that kind of thing so it's it's something that's really cool it's in our kia carnivals which is really nice our, our higher end carnivals and then they have it in the higher end tally rides as well this little white triangle right there if you press it it will collapse it uh, and then you have the big screen there you're, whatever you're looking at in all three boxes which is kind of cool so again little arrow takes me back little house takes me home I'm gonna go home real quick and then just show you this is just by swiping left to right um, the map feature is an inlay right here I don't think you could barely see it just because of the Sun but if I press that map feature if I actually press the map feature there we go. Uh, then it opens up the big map. So here you can just go into the magnifying glass and then you can type in your destination. You can also again do it there on the steering wheel by just pressing and saying the destination where you want to go. You can only do this while you are parked. So that's why you can use your voice when you are driving. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, you have your compass, you can change your volume right there of sound effects versus the voice of the person that's talking to you, the, the computer that's talking to you. It, it's kind of all right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, HD traffic is not, uh, it's not like high definition traffic. HD is a company, so they have like HD traffic, HD um, weather, uh, Doppler radar, that kind of thing. So it's a company called HD, which can get kind of confusing. All right, we are already past a half hour mark and still plenty to go. So let's kind of blow through this as quickly as possible. Uh, maps and navigation menu is the second one that I like. I always say put your home address here under home because uh, you can have multiple favorites down there. That way, it's not because you don't know where you live, but let's say you're traveling somewhere and you need to get back on a major interstate to take you 400 miles to get home. You can just click home, get your directions of where you need to be, and then you can just turn it off. But I found it very, very useful just to have home always programmed into my, into my vehicle. Also, POI categories. This is important. Uh, I have kids and we travel a lot for softball and we use fast food and restaurants a lot. So if I just click restaurants, it'll tell me what's near me. That's a sit down restaurant. So Fazoli's, Pizza Hut, Paskey, Simple Simons. I think Simple Simons is out of business. So I don't know how quickly this updates, but uh, going back here, you have gas, parking, shopping, groceries, pharmacies, banks, ATMs, roadside assistance. This is not going to connect you to Kia Roadside. This is going to uh, take you to like a towing company or or other places that are kind of like that. So let's take a look at, I don't know if you can tell that it's highlighted purple there and then you have these grayed out selections here. So along route near destination and near center of map. So if you have a route plugged in, so if you have directions plugged in, a long route will show you places along your route, obviously, uh, but center of map or, or near center, it's going to show you what's in your physical range of gas to get there with you being at the center. So it's very useful for electric vehicles, but very useful for gas vehicles as well if you are trying to find something in your radius where you don't have to refuel. 
you can save places the previous destinations has been pretty helpful uh, you can edit your route add things to your route all kinds of things right there under navigation menu phone pretty self-explanatory bluetooth on from your device in order to search all on your device select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen that's all you do it's super easy i can usually do it with a customer in under 30 seconds it's, it's very very easy to do phone projection so this does have apple carplay and android auto but you need a usb cable to do so so uh, we still are our higher trim level vehicles need USB cables. Our lower trim level vehicles are wireless. I don't know why. Uh, voice memos, climate control. I don't know, that climate button to me is a little useless, um, except unless you are locking your rear climate controls for your back passengers. So if I press that, my people in the second row can't manipulate that screen I showed you earlier. You have some dehumidifying set, uh, settings there, and then you have your temperature controls there in this kind of bigger screen. The reason why I say it's kind of useless is because this center climate system down here is very, very useful and it's right there where your hands go. It's going up here into the touch screen can be a little bit cumbersome. Valet mode, there's passenger talk again. Quiet mode is kind of cool. So when quiet mode is selected, all radio and media is played only in the front speakers and the volume in the rear will, uh, will be turned off. So only in the front speakers will your information be displayed and then your volume um, will not play in the back. So if you have people that are sleeping, um, you know, while you're traveling, that's very, very useful. All you do is turn this on right there. You can see that it's on with the purple button and then turn it back off and then it just applies the volume, you know, automatically. Pretty, pretty cool. Again, rear climate. So that's kind of like the other climate. It's actually, I think the same screen, but you can just go right to, oh no, you can see where it's different. Rear climate, you can kind of see the rear right here. What's, this part is all looks the same, but this, second, this part right here, you can change the directionals of where you want that rear climate to go. Um, HD radio, we kind of already talked about that. And setup, radio, media, Kia Connect, and notifications and user manual. Let's go into Kia Connect real quick. Your sales associate should be going through this with you and setting up your Kia Connect, which is your app. So you do get one year of complimentary services where you could do things like remote control the car, you can do um, remote climate, you can do all that kind of stuff just on your app anywhere in the world, anywhere you have a cell connection, which is really cool because the remote start on your key fob um, only works within like what 25 yards give or take I mean it's it's not a, it's not a large gigantic range but the app works anywhere your car could be in a different city and you could turn it on or off or or all that kind of stuff track it even a lot of things you can do for you for that first year um, so it's super easy you go into Kia Connect I always say activate 911 service uh, what that does is if you are in an accident and your airbags deploy uh, it'll call 911 for you uh, which is kind of cool um, that way you know, you can get the help you need as long as the head unit is not disabled. Um, so yes, you just agree in terms of conditions. Yes, I want to do 911 connect. It'll do all this later when you set it up also. But this is activating service for Kia Connect. Uh, there was a button there right above 911 connect that said activate service. If you go to 911 connect first, obviously it'll take you here at first to set it up. Super, super easy, but a lot of people have problems right here. Um, I've seen it many, many times. The easiest and best way to get your Kia Connect set up is do not do anything on the website. Do not do anything in the app first. Come to the car and just follow the steps in the car. So you enter in your phone number. Do, 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 do. do you click uh, submit after that's done, which is right there. And then you're going to get another box that kind of looks like this. Uh, and it's going to say enter your code. I'm actually going to click I already have a code. So you can see enter in verification code right here do 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 verification code then you click submit and then it'll text you a link to your phone you follow the link set up your account and then download the app and then enter in the same username and password you created before typically it's your phone number and whatever password it is and then you're in and if people do that step you're in like it just works but I've seen many many people at the course of my J and my job and walking through this with people is they go and they download the app first and then they set up their own username and password and then they get to this point and somehow it just gets all conjobulated and and it doesn't work and you have to call customer service or you have to turn the car off and on 
it, it's a pain in the butt. So, but if you just go to the car first, I trust me, it should work. <laughs> it should work. Let's go back a step. So actually, let's go back. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's your roadside assistance uh, inside Kia Connect. So if you click roadside assistance and your phone is connected, it's going to transmit you to the roadside customer care and then it's just going to call it for you. So that's where you go if you are just needing roadside assistance, calendar, weather, vehicle diagnostics, maintenance, it's all connected to your car all through your Kia Connect, all through your app. Okay, still scooting along. There's a lot of stuff to get through in this car. Uh, we haven't even touched user profiles yet. So you can go into user profile, set two different profiles uh, for a driver, one other person, and then a, uh, a, a guest. You can manipulate that picture right there and change your own picture to what you wanted for what Kia has selected for you. Um, so yeah, you can do that. I recommend doing user profile before you go into vehicle. Vehicle is where you can spend your whole afternoon, you know, setting this car up exactly how you want it. So. Right down the side, you have your different settings. You have your different things you can manipulate. You click into, let's say, driver safety. You can turn all this stuff on and off if you don't like it. If you don't like lane keep assist or blind spot detector, uh, you could turn it off. If you don't like safe uh, exit safety, it provides a warning and doors control when an approaching vehicle is detected in your blind spot. So basically, it's going to beep at you if you're trying to open your door and there's a car zooming by. Um, it's It can... It can do that and door control means it can actually lock your door so you can't open it if the car is that close you can turn all this stuff on and off you can make it warnings instead of taking active control i mean it's insanely customizable which is really really cool let's see drive mode so drive mode you have tow mode and then here you can pick your tow weight so if you got something that's heavy and take a look heavy you can kind of see it'll show you like a big camper Medium will show you like a little, uh, a little like U-Haul thing, and light should be like a like one of those little truck things you can pull behind, like a, just like a little bit of a truck, <laughs> just something small. So that's kind of cool. So you can manipulate your drive mode right there with tow mode. Cluster. Let's see if this has my favorite thing. I love cluster theme. Actually, let's go to cluster theme, and it has link to drive mode. So if you are in sport mode, it's going to change. If you are in eco mode, it's going to change what it looks like because you have this like A, I think is that. But if I click B, you're going to see how it changes into sport mode. C, it's going to change into, I think that's smart mode. But let's take a look at dynamic. I really love dynamic. It's going to change it to the weather that's outside. So right now it is a bright sunny day and your display will be a bright sunny day. Here in Colorado, we have hailstorms and snowstorms and lightning and all that kind of stuff. This display shows that, like it'll have little lightning uh, animations. And a couple of weeks ago when it was hailing really bad, it had hail, like it had legitimate hail, like as, as that. So Kia's done a great job in dynamic mode. I'm a big fan. I'm gonna leave it there because I think everybody should have dynamic mode. But uh, that's just under cluster. You can do illumination, blue light filter. This is also where you reset the fuel economy. You can turn on and off the welcome sound and then content selection. So you can, remember I told you you have like the blind spot view, the icy road warning, why didn't talk about that, but uh, wiper lights display. So you can change the stuff that's gonna appear right here. Like if it's an icy road conditions, you'll get a little warning right there and you can, you can change that. So this is where you turn all that stuff off and on. You can customize this car exactly how you want it. But let me show you, cli well, climate's kind of boring. Seats, so you can do seat change alerts. You can do warmer and ventilation features. So you can link it to your climate, which is really cool. That way, when you set this, you can link it to your steering wheel and then your seat warmers or your ventilation. So depending upon how you have it set uh, in your app, um, it's going to turn on certain things, which is kind of cool. So definitely play around with that. Uh, see easy access so when i open the car door uh for this car it's going to move me all the way back when the engine's turned off uh for mobility to help me in and out so you know if you have mobility issues that's definitely very helpful here is that lumbar stabilization system while driving so you can do it 30 minutes 60 minutes or off and lumbar stabilization decreases pressure on the lumbar spine and alleviate back discomfort while driving and it actually takes a while lights so this is your ambient lighting you can go in here you can link your lights to drive mode you can have it dim in the dark you can set your brightness all right here 
Uh, more importantly, here's your color. So you can do some of these colors that are preset or you can set a custom color, um, ambient lighting, all that kind of good stuff uh, in the 72 different color customs that you can choose from. Um, high beam assist, uh, headlight display, all that stuff is right down here as well. You can do uh, interior lighting always on, uh, all kinds of different things. If you want it to do something, it can do something. Uh, under door, you can do two press lock and two press auto unlock. This is where I set the power lift gate. So you can set the smart lift gate and the smart lift gate close. So when you walk up to it, when you walk away from it kind of thing, like I was saying, window control. So that enables and disables the remote window control function on the key fob. And then you have your power height as well. So you can set it to a full open level two. So a little bit less level three, uh, level two, even less level one i don't even know what that's for but uh definitely you can set your height for your power lift gate as well sorry if i am scooting along but if you like what you see don't forget to like and subscribe boot that like button um because it does definitely help me out um and i do do this uh kind of for fun and also to help customers because i can send them the video to their car which is kind of cool digital key i haven't had a lot of experience with digital key but what is pretty neat about this car is let's take a look at the gigantic key fob we call it the briefcase key fob so kind of big you got your remote start there on the side lock unlock uh remote open and and a horn right there on the other side you know we call it the briefcase like i was saying but take a look at this thing this is your card key so kind of little you can just carry this with you you have to program it right here so if you click card key then you can enable card key and you have to save your card key i haven't really set one up yet because i've never been able to do so with a customer um, everyone's kind of declined it so um, i'm not an expert by any means but what in the theory you should be able to do is carry just this with you and not this big old key fob and then be able to unlock lock your car start your car all that kind of stuff you also have digital key so digital key information, there's your serial number for this guy, uh, but you also have to program it on your smartphone. But digital key is going to allow you to open and close the doors and start the car with your smartphone. You just have to put your smartphone in the wireless phone charger down there and it should start your car. Again, I've never had anybody want me to set it up for him, so I'm not an expert at that, uh, but that's what it should do in theory. Lastly, let's hit convenience because there's some important stuff in convenience. Rear occupancy alert, wireless charging system. You want to make sure that's on if your wireless charger isn't working. And then auto rear wiper. Get a lot of customers who don't think their rear wiper works because that is turned off. All right, scooting along still. Climate control. Man, there's a lot of stuff to get through in this car. You have your physical buttons all across the front there. Map, navigation, radio, media, hazard lights. You can see your hazards going on. Uh, and then you have another customizable button. Here you have different things like the Wi-Fi hotspot, HD radio, you can set it to passenger talk, um, different things. So if you're um, definitely set that to your own uh, liking and then setup is gonna take you back right up into that navigation setup display screen. Uh, well, it's not a navigation, sorry, I read that word, but right into your setup screen for your systems. Directionals right here, so you can set feet and face and where you want the air to be flowing. You have your blower speeds there for your blowers. You could turn the whole thing off if you wanted right there. Uh, you can go right into your rear climate and then set it, and it's gonna go back up there and automatically turn on that rear climate screen. Um, so like I said, pretty useful just right down there. Heated steering wheel is right here on the left. You have your dual climate control for driver and passenger. You have sync, so you can set Let's say passenger to 77, driver's on low, press sync, it's gonna set the temperature back to whatever the driver is. Down here you have a USB port, the USB-C port, wireless phone charger, you have your heated seats and air conditioned seats right there. You have it for driver and passenger, so passenger is obviously over there. Um, so that's high, medium, and low. Heated seats is at the top, high, medium, and low. You have your standard uh, gear shift right there. You have your cup holder there for change, your change holder, dual cup holders. You have your different drive modes right here. Let's see if I can get it out of the sun. So you have comfort, sport, smart, eco, and snow. And then you can press this button in. See how it's highlighted uh, orange there? 
that means uh, you are locking your rear wheels. So anything that's orange means that that is what you're in. So your rear wheel lock uh, is there. So if it's really bad weather, if you're towing something and in bad weather, um, that'll just give you extra traction. It'll just lock your rear wheels. You have your forward parking sensors right there. That little button here with the camera is just that. You press that, it's gonna show you your camera view. What's really cool about this car in camera view is you have augmented reality. So you have a real-time picture, let's see if you can see that truck going by, of the augmented reality view in this car. So uh, I found it useful in a couple of places. Uh, it kind of sucks that the car is not the color of your car in the, in the demo, it's always the white. Um, but uh, it's, it's definitely useful. You can also change your different kind of views right here as well, like if you want to go into a tighter uh, view there or see what's on the sides. So I just wanted to point that out under camera. That screen will also activate when you uh, go into reverse as well. Uh, auto hold uh, and auto off. Auto hold is actually very useful. I use it all the time. I'm going to go ahead and throw myself in drive real quick and just kind of pull up. Let's say I'm at a drive through I'm now stopped behind a car, but I want to take my feet off the pedals because I've been here for a long time. I want to make sure my foot is pressed down on the, on the brake. Press auto hold. You'll see auto hold appear in green on the screen right down there. And now you are parked. I could take my feet off the pedals. Everything is good. The second I'm ready to go, all you do is hit the accelerator and away we go. And then if you are in the same drive cycle as in the car hasn't been turned off yet, to go back into auto hold, I just press my foot down on the brake again and I can take my foot back off. So kind of cool. Uh, auto off, that's that feature where the car will kind of like act like it's turned off when you're at a red light. It kind of does that to save gas. Uh, you have, again, this nice uh, bright sunroof as well. And the controls are right here, front and rear. Let me show you the rear because I said that is your ultra wide sunroof in the back and the glass does not open. So kind of cool there. You have this car here came with as an accessory, the home link mirror. So you, uh, if you have the home link mirror, you can set your garage door openings right there, but you do have the standard mirror, not the digital mirror in the X Pro. What am I forgetting? A uh, big central cubby right here. And you got your little chain, uh, little, little tray right there not bad i feel like i'm forgetting something in this car even though it's almost an hour long video um well that's about it i mean if you have any questions uh feel free to leave them in the comment section below if i can help you find a vehicle please let me know uh, but this is the 2024 kia sx x line um it's beeping because i got the door open and i got the keys on me and I feel like it's beeping for another reason, but we'll figure that part out later. Again, this has the terracotta interior, which is the rarest and coolest of the interiors, especially when it comes into this blue. It's also the interior that I found that most people who order it tend to have a longer wait time. I do not know why. All right, guys, thanks for putting up with me and thanks for watching. If you made this far, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to boot those buttons. Um, and I will see you guys down at the dealership. Thanks, guys.